production line luxury to the masses. Where's my cat? Picture. Photo. Look at that cat. So, these have flower decorations on the curtain. But since this is a cat lady now, I'm thinking I should make them, um, I don't know, something cat like her. Fishies. Little fishies. Maybe I should just start blocking in other things. You know. He's just here now with Jeanette talking about the Walmart low price guarantee. That's for seats when I'm stuck? Yes. Look up. Check out that price. That's Walmart's everyday low price. Not that loud. Yes. Again. Massive blob of. Bring your last person to see. Save more on the candy your family loves. For low prices on Reese's eggs and bunnies, Cadbury cream eggs, and all their Hershey's faces. Just like they did long, long time ago, they used electric color neon acrylic paint. Paint like the masters of old. It wants to be. Truss, really. So let's say you have two walls, 
This is so intensely tedious, delicate, dangerous. Was created and perfected the concrete dome. In the first century BC, this structure, now half submerged, was a cutting edge experiment in construction. I'm wondering what they actually knew about concrete at this time, and how long have the Romans been working with concrete for a couple of centuries by this point when it's really a tried and tested method? What's audacious here is really the scale of the room that they're spanning. It's incredible to imagine the confidence of the people who built it, they will have had to have placed concrete on top of a, a wooden structure. If I had a helper, they could put out paint for me. If I say, yo, give me some of that sparkly white, I'm gonna do it. Is packed in by hand and left to cure. I'm going, yes, master. Yes. Build a structure like that and temporarily support it and then remove the temporary support and expect it to stand. It's a pretty exciting moment because if there's a failure, it will collapse. When the supports came down at Bayern and the roof held, the Romans had made a massive leap forward. They created a huge space roofed without pillars or columns. But the outside of the dome was far from perfect. Most of the structure is underground because the engineers relied on the hillside for support. This is fine for a prototype, but they were determined to do better. If they could make it freestanding, they could enclose any open space, and the possibilities would be endless. So what's so tough about building a dome? Dr. Chris Carroll and his team in Louisiana are about to find out. They are going to build their own version of the most complex, perfect building the Romans ever created, the Pantheon. Their starting point is the circular supporting wall. Now go ahead and measure the four foot radius from the center of the circle. The Pantheon probably takes the most thought when it comes to how are you going to build it. Chris and the team are off to a good start. In Rome, Steve examines the real thing up close. The Pantheon. 5,000 tons of concrete defying gravity. Just look at the scale of that dome. With a little squeeze, the Statue of Liberty would fit in here. It is in plan a circle of 142 foot in diameter. And in section, it is 142 feet high with a dome at the top half. And it is like that because you could then fit a perfect sphere within the building. And fundamentally, you are inside a perfect piece of built mathematics. Yeah. It's just an incredible building. What's great about it is it's all structural engineering. It tells its own story. So what's going on here? All we've got here is this massive weight that's bearing down at this arcade level here, the top of this arcade level. And what that's doing is it's creating huge vertical forces that have to be transmitted down to the foundations by lots and lots of structure. But they've beautifully hidden it in the walls. The real work is done by eight strong points or buttresses. They carry the zones weight. Mm -hmm. And that means that the gap between them can be opened up and made into usable spaces all the way around the perimeter. So that you get this sense of this incredibly massive dome sitting on a light structure. A trained eye can see how it was done. You can see, looking at the outside, some of the internal structures. And an untrained eye does not know what's going on. Skin. What we've got here are these huge relieving arches, about 40 or 50 feet span. And this structure is far stronger than an ordinary brick wall. The arches are built into the brickwork. If they weren't there, traveling all the way around the drum in which the dome sits, the whole thing would come down. These relieving arches are doing their job. Their intention is to transfer 
the huge compression forces from the weight of this massive structure down those buttresses and protect some of the weaker areas of structure below. So if the Pantheon looks simple, it's because it's designed highly complex. Chris Carroll, although he's a doctor of engineering, has never built anything like this. It's by far the most complicated thing I've ever built. And with the Pantheon, there's a lot of different aspects you have to take into consideration. The way that we did it was just with the formwork that we created the shoe okay. art. And he's made a few other simplifications. No buttresses, just a thick, continuous wall. The Roman way of doing this was to build two brick skins, and as they rose, fill them with concrete. Walls on this scale aren't a problem, but the dome is a challenge. If you think about it, the dome is basically an arch that is three-dimensional, and it all tries to compress at the top. No modern engineer would build a dome as big as the Pantheon without using metal reinforcements. But the Romans just had concrete, and that meant they had to be clever. Really clever. The wall has a concrete core, but the aggregate changes as you get up. So it gradually gets lighter, like all the way through the dome. Something doesn't seem and right. It's basically layered like a cake. It was all in the concrete mix. Near the base, they used heavy stone. And by the time they got to the top, they were using pumps. A volcanic rock filled with air. The dome gets thinner as it rises, from 19 feet at the base to just over 5 feet at the top. The Pantheon's dome is a piece of precision engineering that has stood for 19 centuries. The Louisiana model is brand new and a great deal smaller than simple. But they're both built according to the same principles. So for Chris, it's time for the acid test. Is the design as strong as he thinks? Wednesday, what does the death of an ocean have to do with the birth of civilization? Or what can Ratzinger Y teach us about the extinction of the dinosaurs? And why do the British Isles end up being the new North Pole? The connections are deeper than you think. The eyes of the continents of Eurasia, Wednesday at 10, only on science. Question everything. Suffering from allergy congestion, Allegra D decongests. Allegra D depressurizes so you can breathe. A fast, non drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant for 24 hours of congestion free breathing. Allegra D defends against allergy congestion. I'm Carrie Eady Clutch, winner of America's Next Top Model. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, so I talked to my doctor about my condition and my treatment option. He told me about Stellara. In a medical study, 7 out of 10 Stellara patients saw at least 75% clear skin at 12 weeks. And 6 out of 10 patients had their plaques rise. It's rated as clear or minimal at 12 weeks. Stellara may lower your ability to fight infections and increase your risk of infections. Some serious infections require hospitalization. Before starting Stellara, your doctor should test for tuberculosis. Stellara may increase your risk of cancer. Always tell your doctor if you have any sign of infection or have had cancer. Alert your doctor of new or worsening problems, including headaches, seizures, confusion, and vision problems. These may be signs of a rare potential pain or brain condition. Serious allergic reactions to occur. Tell your doctor if you or anyone in your house needs hey, to receive the vaccine. I've used Dr. Dustin. I fixed the car for four times a year. Technical Institute Opportunity Scholarship and help lower your education costs if you qualify. Since 1969, ITT Technical Institute has offered students degree programs and promising career fields. Our schools of study include information technology, electronics technology, drafting and design, business, and criminal justice. Pursuing an education is a sound investment. ITT Technical Institute, 
education for the future. To find out more about the Opportunity Scholarship at ITT Tech, call 866-594-0538. Now, flat apps and a toned stomach can be yours. Like the perfect fitness app card and roll, the new way to a flatter stomach. Invented by the U.S. Navy SEAL who brought you the perfect push-up. It's a revolution in waistline carving results. Just drive, pull, and stretch, and extend the muscles of your core and abs. In return, and do the stomach carving. Thought I brought up a fan brush. Ab carver pros can add a this engine. The engine coils up as you extend, and then springs you back to keep your workout going. Drive left, right, and center to carve the upper, middle, and lower abs. The inner and outer oblique plus your chest and arms. So no more sit-ups and crunches. It's only minutes a day for more sculpted arms and a flatter stomach. With its large stable rubber tires and comfortable ergonomic handle, it works on hard floors and carpets. So here's the deal. The waistline shrinking app carter pro is only two payments of $19.95. Order now and get a set of perfect fixes, knee pads free. Carve away inches and flatten your stomach with the perfect fitness app carter pro. Call or go online right now. Do you know what this is? How about that? Because I seriously have no idea. But then again, having no idea is sort of the idea behind the new series, What Is That? Oh, look, at clues. Hmm. Maybe we can guess it before time runs out. Is it a sponge? Or a leaf? Ah, the spots are where I still don't know the answer. What is that? Series premiere Thursday, April 4th at 10. On Science. Of course. A team of engineering specialists is in the thick of recreating ancient Rome. Testing construction techniques first pioneered 2,000 years ago. So what can they discover about the Pantheon from their mini dome? This is our Pantheon. This is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to build. It's probably also the coolest thing I've ever had to build. Mm -hmm. And we're curious to see how much the dome can hold. We're going to do a simple test. What will it take to crush this unreinforced concrete dome? Dr. Chris Carroll starts with a wooden platform to ensure the load is evenly distributed. Then he piles weight on 4,000 pounds. That's like a hatchback. 5,200 pounds. More like a station wagon. It's 7,600 so far, so we're going to go with another 1,200. More weight. The load sitting on top of the dome now is about as heavy as the dome itself. And still, it doesn't fail. But the sheer height of the blocks is becoming dangerous. We tried to break it. We've stacked concrete over eight feet tall above it and haven't been able to. Chris stops before this tower of concrete topples. But he's satisfied. It's pretty clear why the real Pantheon stands when other great buildings have gone. And this makes me think that the Romans definitely knew what they were doing. I mean, a dome is a very, very strong structure, and you can see that based on how high we stack the concrete, and that's 16,000 pounds. A dome is one of the most difficult structures to build. But build it right, and it's a powerhouse. For almost 1,900 years, there's been nothing on Earth to match the Pantheon. It took 20th century technology to significantly advance what the Romans invented. If we look forward to today's domes, we're able to introduce reinforced concrete, post-tension that reinforced concrete, use cable structures, and much lighter materials like fabrics to create huge dome structures. Mm, so undo, undo, undo. It's a huge leap forward from Roman times. But what was created at the Pantheon was also a massive leap from the very first structure at Rome. Only ancient Rome could have produced these buildings. With fabulous wealth, the spoils of Rome, its builders simply didn't need to worry about cost. When I think about the legacy of Rome, I think about imperial ambition, I think about a tremendous amount of resources, and I see how those came to bear on Roman architecture. But Steve Burroughs, an engineer who I don't know if I should just continue on with that filming. There's something else at play here. Yes, they have limitless resources, but they also took on enormous challenges. The two things that strike me about engineering in Rome is that it wasn't so much a revolution as an evolution. They just got better and better over time. What I've seen is that skills were passed on from father to son, from generation to generation. 
such that when you look at a building like the Pantheon, what you see is pure perfection. They just got better and better at what they did. The second was this unique combination of ambition and opportunity. The Romans didn't appear to be constrained by finances, and they certainly weren't constrained by fear. When the Romans wanted to build something, they just did it. Chris and his team have built an aqueduct, a crane, and a dome. They come face to face with some of the challenges that tested the men who built Rome. This has been an incredible experience, and it's definitely given me a whole new respect for what the Roman engineers did. Oops. The builders of this city had the opportunity, the skill, and the courage to reshape their world revolutionize the way they live. And although the empire would eventually fall, these awe-inspiring structures still stand. A lasting legacy to the pioneering science of Roman engineering. This is your one and only warning. Your screen will soon be filled with dramatized stories of scientific research that some people may find controversial and disturbing. Your description is advised. Mm -hmm. Let us be certain. Does progress always come at a price? Are some experiments too risky? Just wrong. A little curiosity can hurt anyone. The power of its own, no matter how or why it is obtained, good or evil intentions do not always result in good and evil outcomes. As you will see, in these three stories of experimentation and unforeseen consequences, how you do people something that is emotionally powerful and memorable, that you can survive safely. I do mean a man whose stomach off the window for wonders of human biology. The first Asian all American hero whose quest to extend human life led him down the path to fascism. He wanted the power to save lives, but did that give him the right to decide who deserves to live? At the age of 25, a junior named Charles Lindbergh aims to become the first man to fly solo across the Atlantic. Gifted pilot and engineer has helped to develop a new plane to do this. The spirit of St. Louis. In 1927, Lindbergh was a male pilot. He learned that there was a $25,000 prize being offered for the first person to make a transatlantic solo flight. Uh, this was an extraordinary amount of money because this would be an extraordinary feat. It was unheard of, an unheard of distance. 3,500 miles of open ocean, no place to land. Any error, any mistake is a death sentence. Six men have already died in the attempt. But alone in the clouds, Lindbergh feels invincible. There were times in an aeroplane when it seemed I had escaped mortality to look down on Earth like a god. When Lindbergh makes it to France, he steps into a disprudence. Even he couldn't have predicted that, that 100,000 people would turn out on the airfield outside of Paris to greet him. But he would, in fact, become the most famous man on the planet. It was an achievement of both his endurance and skill as an aviator and also his technical skill as an engineer. The young pilot is idolized and honored like no other American. Lindbergh is the most famous man on earth. He's time's first man of the year. He can't walk down the street without attracting a crowd. He's a celebrity to end all celebrities. Two years after his transatlantic flight, Lindbergh uses his fame and his engineering skills to attack the problem infinitely more challenging. Can you be dead with engineering? 
just kissing time with this kind of hex. To what? To what? To what? It's Charles Lindbergh, it's his sister-in-law. She developed something called rheumatic fever, which is an infection that can result in damage to one of the heart valves. In the 1920s, there was no solution, so people eventually died of heart failure. Mm. People say it solves nothing. Pizza does nothing. Thank mm -hmm. 